Now this question in terms of localization of liquidity and how in terms of the, uh, the broadening the definition of the stock of high quality liquid assets that serve the, uh, as a component of the LCR computation for under Basel III and whether in terms of um, this will actually help a bank navigate through a future crisis is actually a, a quite um, is a is a um, is a major disc discussion point uh, throughout the industry and today at the moment. As far as localization is concerned, there is um, as far as localization is concerned, there is a, a tendency in terms of if you were to look back at the market at the moment, you will see that um, that the cost of actually funding has actually risen overall for the broad industry. This is in, in terms of despite that the central banks have actually flooded the liquidity, flooded the market with liquidity, and most of that liquidity has actually found its way, um, if it, you know, hasn't found its way into the broader market, and by this I mean in terms of extension of credit, but actually found its way and parked itself at, for example, at central banks or low-yielding government assets. Localization itself has also been uh, you know, can be reflected in terms of the regulators, and there are there are some views out there that regulators on the national level, okay, are actually not actually facilitating the transferability of liquidity across borders, because in terms of actually of a market stress, although that the Basel re Basel requirements is actually requiring banks to actually produce local LCR ratios and actually evidence and produce. Uh, evidence in terms of the uh, transfer of liquidity across borders, national regulators in itself, they're actually are not exactly, um, they're not actually in terms of uh, as far as you know, facilitating that process. And the legal and the operational difficulties mean that in terms of actually liquidity effectively is trapped in a certain region or a certain locate or a certain country. Um, a good example to actually for localization is actually we can you know, look at you know, you know, currently in this current market climate, okay, um, some very large tier one European institutions are actually seriously reviewing in terms of their uh, liquidity risk profiles or prof risk profiles broadly speaking within different certain countries. And, and, and in this one here, we're specifically referring to those troubled Eurozone countries. An example we could use like, for example, Spain. And those tier one institutions are looking to actually to, uh, to, um, to actually, they are, they are, I've actually started constructing local country-specific balance sheets and actually uh, restricting uh, the actual the size of those balance sheets and uh, looking to, in terms of where there is actually a net funding, uh, a net funding shortfall, is actually meet that funding from a local perspective rather than in terms of from the from the from, um, from the local uh, group position. So this is actually happening on the ground itself to actually demonstrate in terms of how localization is a main, you know, is what is actually happening practically on the ground itself. Um, furthermore, in terms of, as far as liquidity is concerned, if we move on now in terms of the, uh, the stock of high quality liquid assets, again, this is actually an active discussion between the industry and the Basel committee in terms of what constitutes and how should we actually define what makes up those stock of high quality liquid assets. Banks are actually advocating in terms of that this definition needs to be, be, need to be broader and it actually also needs to be uh, more diverse, whereby you actually can accommodate uh, a wider range of collaterals and the, the, current, uh, the, the current discussions out there at the moment is, as to, is to perhaps incorporate equities and commodities, for example, gold, uh, into, the, into that stock. Um, banks are also, um, um, in their discussions with the regulators, is saying that uh, um, but broadening the definition should also ensure that you know that they don't want to get get overexposed in terms of the concentration risk or to a particular asset class or a particular currency, and also in terms of they must uh, any type of regulation should ensure that the pro cyclicality is not actually uh, is actually you know it's not further uh, further worsened to you know further worsened as far as um, um, managing liquidity um, on on a day to day basis. Um, now, in terms of you know, if you if you go one step further, um, you know, as far as you know, this this you know this whole conversation around the stock, uh, we have some new regulations out there, um, which is around in terms of the the collateral requirements to serve the needs of over-the-counter derivatives exposures. Now, there has been a, there has been a study out there in terms of that net net there's going to be a shortfall of global collateral to meet those margin requirements to the tune of around about just over six and a half trillion U.S. dollars. Uh, 
what does this actually mean in terms from you know from a, a liquidity standpoint there actually will be not enough collateral that is out there available to the banks themselves to actually serve their needs both from a marginal point of view and also obviously meeting the LCR so that's an important in terms of important to note and obviously the, certainly the industry I've obviously I'll be raising those concerns with the regulators at the moment and uh, you know I've, and I believe that you know as the as the consultation period is still open you know we may potentially um, get some revisions in terms of on, on that particular measure. Um, looking at the other ratio, the, uh, the net stable funding ratio, which is effectively uh, where the regulator is advocating recommending that banks actually lengthen the maturity profile of their funding to support their balance sheets, okay? There is a real, there is a real issue over here as far as the banks are concerned. Um, there was a study that was done recently in terms of just to try to equate and to approximate in terms of how much additional debt that the banks would actually should be issuing in order to meet that NSFR requirement. And that actually study actually posted about, uh, came out, gave an approximation of around about three trillion US dollars. Coupled in terms with this obviously uh, additional debt issuances is that the actual investor market uh, where the banks would typically issue into is actually shrinking. So they, on the one hand, in terms of actually of meeting the, you know, being compliant with the actual ratio, but in face in terms of not having a market that could tap into is actually causing some real friction with between the uh, the industry and the regulator itself. This is because in terms of there are um, there are in terms of like um, um, discussions about in terms of what we would classify as the the bail-in measures that the regulators are, are really trying to put in place at the end of the day whereby bond investors who typically will be the buyers of, that, of the bank's debt in itself will be required to effectively to sign up to or agree to that if the bank came went into run some sort of trouble, they will, be there as, uh, they will be there as in terms of actually to help to recapitalize the bank. And this obviously in itself is not very favorable as far as from a, from a bond investor point of view because of the additional risk that you will obviously take on board. If we were to take into account in terms of, let's talk about cost. We talked about three trillion of, a, of uh, US dollars of additional uh, debt that needs to be issued. The approximate cost that you know, you know, studies have said out there is that the banks will obviously have to pay an additional, additional between 100 and 350 basis points in order to actually to, you know, to get the, the investor to actually sign up. And that was obviously a major issue in itself. Um, and more so in terms of, in, in addition to that as well, is that there are all the legal requirements in terms of as far as bond investors are concerned, whether they are, will be able to, you know, to uh, take up the, uh, to actually acquire that debt, full knowing in terms of that they will be looked as, a, as, a, as, a, as, as an entity which will actually help to recapitalize the banks. And they're all internal, uh, they're all internal um, requirements that may not actually allow them to do that. So therefore, in terms of, from the broad perspective, we have got in terms of a, uh, a localization of liquidity still obviously prevalent today. Um, we have in terms of a definition of stock of high quality liquid assets that are looking, where the industries are looking to expand and broaden as well. And then we have also the challenges as far as from a, um, supporting the balance sheet with longer term funding in terms of actually a smaller investor market.